Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw, and there are actually a lot of changes in the newest patch that they haven't told us about. Changes with Pokemon, changes with things going on inside the game, so I want to bring you all of the so-called secret changes in this video. Get ready because I'm sure you've noticed some of them, and if there's something I've missed, please let me know in the comments. I'm curious if there's something out there that just slipped through the cracks. Real quick, I want to shout out the sponsor of this video, all of you. Thank you so much for watching my videos, checking out what I do here. I will have Ho-O's to give away, and I'm giving them away to people who have that notification bell turned on. They show up to my videos early and often. That's who I'm going to be giving the Ho-O's away to. Enjoy, and enjoy the rest of this video. You silly Ho-O's. I want to talk about this sound. That new sound is the sound of you finding a match. I think the most interesting thing about that sound is that sound is taken directly from the Chinese beta version of the game. I don't know why exactly they changed the match find sound except for the cool coincidence that it is coming from the more updated Chinese version. Hopefully a little hint that we may be getting features from that version very soon. A new feature that they added to the shop on the Unite Battle Committee where you are selecting the licenses is the trending section. Obviously, these are Pokemon that have recently received balance patches uh, or Pokemon that possibly are getting a lot of play. Obviously, Blaziken didn't receive anything in this last patch and Talonflame received a small buff. It could be that these Pokemon are rotated based on pick rates for the recent days or just Pokemon that the game wants to showcase for new players. I often get asked what Pokemon should I buy, this or that? And I kind of think it's cool that now they have a page showing, hey, all of these Pokemon are recently buffed or getting a lot of play or what have you. You've probably, of course, seen the events calendar showing a lot of the stuff we have, the discount for the anniversary, the Ho-Oh event coming up, Charizard's going to be a free gift, a 50% off coupon, Panic Parade coming back, lots of stuff like that. They also have the World Championships down there where they're talking about some deals for that. And they have this cool section with balance adjustments. I think they could do even more here where if you hover over each Pokemon, it would actually just tell you what happened to them. But this is a really cool visual representation for someone who is hopping in the game and is probably not as connected as you or I as to what's going on. They can take a quick look and see, oh, these Pokemon got a nerf, these Pokemon got a buff, that's pretty sweet. We also, of course, had this last week, the Ho-Oh Move preview, which I thought was pretty nice. You would hit view details, it would literally be like, scan this on your phone and we'll take you right to a YouTube video showing what's going on in the game. Very cool. We also have this from when I was loading into a game, an ally had shiny spray on their Pokemon and you actually see it on the little user card where it shows the Pokemon they're selecting. It was shiny. I know they have another spray coming out soon. I think they have, you know, little hearts that was data mined from El Chico Eevee. So we're adding new ways to kind of show off some of the cosmetics that you have in the game, which I think is pretty cool. If you've seen the Chinese version, when you load it into the lobby, you'll actually see their kind of avatars standing there. And I think we're moving further and further towards that level of showing off your in-game cosmetics and decisions, and this is just a little piece of that. Now, I told you I was gonna talk about some of the hidden changes to Pokemon. They're not exactly hidden, but they're listed as bug fixes, so I don't think it's as apparent exactly what is happening with some of these changes. Evocron from the Unite Math Chord was helpful enough to give me a huge list of some of these, and there are actually some really nice buffs in here for some builds that, well, Let's talk about it. One of the biggest is going to be Decidueye. Decidueye is an interesting winner of this patch because its Razor Leaf build is now going to be even better with a Muscle Band. Before, when you were using Razor Leaf, only the first target of your multi, you know, kind of pronged attack was getting the procs of that Muscle Band, the extra damage from it. Now it is each leaf that fires. So the other two enemies being hit by it as well are all procking that extra damage from Muscle Band. Rapid Rapid Fire Scarf also gets a huge win here because it used to be only the main target. Now it is the other two targets. So just two hits, essentially two A presses of your auto with Razor Leaf triggered will trigger the Rapid Fire Scarf. Just meaning that you are more quickly getting that increased crazy attack speed against your opponents. This is a pretty cool buff 
for Decidueye and might make Razor Leaf even better. Is it going to be the choice? It's so hard to say that it would be better than that long range snipe, but it's a buff. Along with this, we also have Pokemon that have their area effect of their autos enhanced with this. So Dragapult and someone like Mewtwo Y, they have these area effects with their autos where it would only proc one time of the Muscle Band, but now it will proc every enemy hit with Muscle Band, making it even better on Mewtwo Y, making it even better on Dragapult. Same thing with Duraludon. Duraludon's boosteds are also affected by this. Garchomp actually has AOE with its autos, so now its muscle band will hit multiple targets. And the interesting thing is, this multiple target hit will also have the same triggers with Rapid Fire Scarf. So Rapid Fire Scarf on these Pokemon will trigger faster in some of these fights. This is a really cool buff for a lot of these auto attackers and something that I think a lot of people would not have noticed. I definitely would have taken forever to notice something like that. Additionally, this AOE damage that would trigger things like Muscle Band and Rapid Fire Scarf will also trigger as multiple hits on Charging Charm, giving Charging Charm a, a lot of options for something like a Dragapult. Let's say you already have enough increased attack speed from using Phantom Force. Now you will simply put the Charging Charm on instead of Rapid Fire Scarf and all of your boosted autos that hit multiple enemies charge that charm even faster. Same thing actually with Garchomp in an interesting way. So so I guess there's a question as to whether you might run Muscle Band or you might run Charging Charm. There are a lot of great options when your attacks are hitting multiple enemies. Snorlax's block was actually given a bit of a buff, whereas before Block Plus would not be able to get sort of eight little stun bounces on it, it now can, that bug was fixed. So a buff to Block and bo a Block actually got buffed I don't think it was last patch, maybe it was one patch before that, it gave it a, a bigger shield. So I'm interested to see if people try to pick it up now that it's even better when it hits block plus. Also for Blastoise, the Rapid Spin Hydro Pump build kind of gets a little bit of a buff if you're running Muscle Band because now the auto attacks that are in that AOE could proc Muscle Band on multiple targets. So if you've been running that with Blastoise, now that's going to be stronger. And not every Pokemon got bug fixes that buff them. Some got bug fixes that actually hurt them. Let's talk about Phalanx here. First off, it had a crazy bug and that was fixed. So it had sort of an invincibility bug for like a day. One thing that it got was battle armor working too well. So that's one of its you know passive abilities here. It was triggering too fast and it looks like it is not doing that anymore. It also had something where no retreat did not slow you down the way it was supposed to when you're walking backwards. And now it does. So you should be moving actually a lot slower when walking backwards. A fix that was actually brought to the game was the Mimikyu bug fix. And if you have not seen that bug fix that's when Mimikyu would pop onto the screen as like coming from you know the jungle or something for a gank if you were on switch it would cause your switch to lag for a minute it would let you know Mimikyu was there which is kind of funny but at the same time it was horrible because you're like oh great we have like a second of lag and then the enemy is like on you so that has been changed which is a really nice shadow change there's also an interesting buff for Maridon. So Maridon used to trigger energy amplifier and buddy barrier in a weird way. From what I understood, it only triggered once you were done using the move, like once you had let go of the move, so all the damage really didn't trigger it. Now, once that first meteor hits, energy amplifier, or maybe like right before it hits, energy amplifier and buddy barrier will trigger. This also sets up an interesting situation where you can trigger a single meteor following, get uh, falling, get the benefits of buddy barrier and energy amplifier, leave your Unite move at about 60%, and then just continue fighting with those buffs. Could be a really interesting strategy for Maridon. Also, an interesting bug fix for Mimikyu and Lucario. Apparently, their boosted attack wouldn't always trigger the benefits of the Muscle Band, and now they will trigger it. So before, it had to be preceded by a move or something like that. I'm a little unclear on how this bug fix works, but it just means that Muscle Band is going to work even better on Lucario and Mimikyu for its boosted attacks. Another weird change I've noticed is that the birds now all spawn together. So it used to be Altaria would spawn and then the Swablu would spawn like a half second after. Now they all spawn at the same time, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure why this change has happened, but it's happened. 
Another change they didn't talk about at all is you will now see damage over time or damage you're doing to Pokemon inside of the tall grass. So I had Pikachu, I was running Thunderbolt, and I just noticed, uh, in Thunder, I just noticed I could throw Thunder into tall grass and I would see damage ticks on my opponents where I never used to before. This is gonna give you the opportunity to sort of scope a lot of fights with moves like that in a new way. I don't know if this is intentional or unintentional because it's a pretty huge change. There you go. I did it, right? So there you go. I'm sure there's more, but there are all of the secret changes in the newest update for Pokemon Unite. Again, if there are ones that I missed, please let me know in the comments. I would love to get the word out to everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you, and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.